Good afternoon, this is Minister Mark. I'm going to be talking to you tonight. We're going to take a little time out for health. Tonight we're going to talk about hypertension from a layperson's point of view. I'm going to explore the subject of hypertension. And there's some ground rules. Number one, I'm not a doctor. I don't even play one on TV. <laughs> I'm an engineer. I'm a minister at the Ebenezer Church of God. And I just want to give you some practical advice on hypertension and what it is from a lay person's point of view, um, how it affects you, uh, what can be done to keep it under control. And I'm here to share nothing more. Um, so I, what I plan on doing this little segment, it, we'll see how it progresses, but I plan on having a nurse come in, a doctor come in and just kind of, you know, give you their point of view on this very, very uh, important and serious topic. Um, I'm going to be dealing with it from my point of view as a lay person. Uh, many of you may, may or may not know, some know, some don't know. But I had a stroke last year in May, and I uh, just want to share some of the things I've learned from dealing uh, with stroke and dealing with um, hypertension. All right, so let's go. All right, so what is blood pressure? From the CDC's website, um, the heart pumps blood to the various parts of the body. So it's, it's always pumping blood to various parts of the body. As the blood passes through the vessels it, uh, or the arteries, it pushes against the walls of the arteries. I think I get my little pointer here. So as the blood passes through the uh, vessels of the artery, it um, pushes up against it. This is called this is called pressure. Your pressure, it's important to this point right here. This can't be overstated. Your pressure changes during the daytime. So pressure, blood pressure, blood pressure is the pressure of blood pushing against the walls of your arteries. Your arteries carry blood from your heart to other parts of your body. Your blood pressure rises and falls throughout the day, which I, and I can't overstate that point. Your blood pressure rises and falls throughout the day. So it's not, it's not necessarily the wisest thing to just measure your blood pressure once a year when you have your checkup. Your blood pressure is always changing throughout, throughout the day, depending on what you're doing, what your anxiety levels are, what you're eating what activities you're involved in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Your blood pressure is changing throughout the day. So there are devices that we use to measure blood pressure. Um, there are, uh, any, let me get back to here. There are any number of blood pressure uh, machines that you can have and you can find them at your local Costco, on Amazon, all the places you shop. Um, the one I use is the A&D machine. And um, what you can do is have your blood pressure machine sort of checked by your physician. That's what I would do because I have found in my travels um, that the, the 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 readings vary from some significantly from machine to machine. Um, what's good is to have it sort of calibrated against your doctor's you know manual sigma mom 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 monitor. Uh, so it's important to have it calibrated against that and um, and just get a good machine. Usually there are some there are some which say um, they are, are rated by a, a standardizing agency. You might want to take a look at some of those too. But there are various um, types of blood pressure machine. And I'll have, when my doctor comes on, she'll be um, discussing the various types also. So blood pressure is measured using a sphig mom anometer. Yeah, say that three times fast in the shower and don't say it in the mirror. All right, so let's go. So what is hypertension from the CDC's website? Um, in all, all my charts, I, I hope I have um, all the citations uh, for the places where it's necessary to have citations um, because I am a lay person. I am not a doctor. I don't even play one on TV, as I mentioned. So um, so from the CDC's website, um, blood pressure hypertension is ra rather is caused is sometimes due to certain causes. This pressure, the pressure remains high for a sustained period, um, causing what causing what is called hypertension or high blood pressure. In other words, you have pressure um, going through your, 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 your veins and your arteries. You can't, you have to have that. If you have no pressure, you're dead. Um, so your heart is a pump and it's pumping uh, blood throughout your body and a pump creates pressure. As we all know, if you're a plumber, you know that pretty well. Uh, so it creates pressure. What is happening though is there's uh, something called high blood pressure or hypertension. That's what we're going to deal with um, a little bit today. So your, your blood pressure can be characterized by different levels depending on what's called the systolic pressure or the diastolic pressure. Uh, systolic pressure is when the heart contracts. So that's when the pump pushes, pushes blood 
through the through the veins and through the arteries, so squishes. Um, that's going to give you your um, systolic pressure. That's when the heart is pumping, and then when it relaxes, that's that's your what we call the resting pressure. That's your normal. That's your normal blood. That's your diastolic pressure rather so when it's it's contracting that's your systolic when it's not contracted it is your diastolic pressure i think i'm doing okay with that all right so uh so no, a low blood pr blood pressure which is something called hypo hypotension which is the blood pressure is low um that's anything under um 90 millimeters of mercury or under 60 uh, millimeters of mercury in your diastolic so there are two readings the there's a number which is a systolic that's your top number and then your diastolic reading is your bottom number i always remember them by remembering diastolic as being the denominator which is that thing under the, the fraction sign um so your systolic pressure for normal systolic pressure it is you have a, uh, a systolic pressure of 120 or less and you have a, a uh, diastolic pressure of less than 80 or 80 or less so or actually less than 80 so that'd be like 79 and for a normal blood pressure anything less than 119 or anything less than 120 is considered normal blood pressure so normal blood pressure in this day and age is basically 119 over 79 okay um, if you have anything if you have what's called pre-hypertension that is any blood pressure any blood pressure which is between uh, 120 to 139 in the systolic or 80 to 89 in diastolic that's considered pre-hypertension uh, if you have hypertension stage one it is blood pressure in the systolic region of 140 to 159 or if your diastolic numbers are 90 to 99 um, that's considered pre um, i mean hypertension stage one sorry hypertension stage two which is bad uh, and if you have hypertension stage two, um, and if you check your readings today after this program, and it's greater than or equal to 160 in systolic, or it's greater than 100 in your diastolic, um, you should um, get off the program immediately and go to the emergency room and get someone to uh, look at that. That's a very high reading. That's a very uh, bad situation. So if your pressure is once in systolic, it's greater than 160, greater than or equal to, or if it's um, greater than or equal to 100 in a diastolic, um, that's considered stage two hypertension, and that has to be treated like almost immediately. All right. So the exact cause of hypertension is not known according to uh, uh, the, the, the site that I, I checked. Uh, CDC also says this, the exact cause is not known, but the conditions which are generally associated with hypertension are um, genetic. So some of us are predisposed to high, hypertension, um, stress and aging, where you a lot of stress get, and you get older, you're going to get, <laughs> so you may have um, hypertension. Um, smoking, definitely a, a factor. Um, in fact, name me one disease that isn't exacerbated by smoking. Um, smoking... Uh, is pretty much going to make everything worse. Uh, smoking, if you're smoking now and you can quit, uh, find a way to quit. That's one of the worst things you can do to your body. Um, alcohol and tobacco consumption, again, is also a factor in hypertension. Um, obesity, um, diabetes, diabetes, adrenal and thy thyroid problems are also um, um, factors. Uh, chronic kidney disease, a lifestyle that is sedentary, in other words, a lifestyle that has no movement, um, such as mostly a lot of our lifestyles these days, uh, you basically sit in front of the computer and uh, watch uh, videos or surf the web or just play with your tablet all day long. Um, so these are things that are going to um, possibly have an outcome of hypertension. Also, another big one is the high levels of sodium. Sodium, and I differentiate sodium from salt because some people um, um, equate sodium with salt. Um, not all, um, so sodium chloride is what we call table salt. Um, potassium chloride is also a salt, um, which isn't destructive for you, but sodium chloride is what we call table salt, and that is most salt, but potassium chloride is also a salt. And that's not that does not have the same um, factors risk risk factors as sodium um, chloride. So high levels of sodium intake combined with low levels of calcium 
potassium and magnesium are also causes of hypertension. So if you eat a lot of, let's just go ahead and call it salty foods, or if you eat a lot of salt, or if you pour a lot of salt on your food, or if you eat a lot of processed foods, which are very, very, very high in sodium in, in a lot of cases, um, you are going to be at risk for hypertension. And also if you're low in potassium, you don't eat a lot of foods with potassium and magnesium, you're gonna be at risk for hypertension. Um, a vitamin D deficiency, and of course, if you take certain types of drugs can also um, contribute to hypertension. All right, so the outcome of sustained hypertension, um, high, uncontrolled high blood pressure can lead to disability. Um, so one of the biggest outcomes of, of, um, of uh, hypertension, um, it, it, it can lead to a heart attack or a stroke. Um, it's, it quietly damages your body for years before you have any kind of symptoms. So just quietly, just it's called um, the silent killer for a reason is because most of the symptoms you just with hypertension is just you just feel like you want to sleep a lot. So uh, in, in it, <laughs> what your body is really preparing you for is to put you to sleep for good. Um, so if you it, it just it's a very it's called a silent killer for a reason because it you, the symptoms are very, very subtle. And most of the symptoms are you just feel a little bit more fatigued, a little bit more tired, which, you know, you can equate with a lots and lots of things. Maybe you feel like you work too long. Um, but anyway, so some of those things, um, you have to um, be careful uh, with it. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what um, what we can do. So here's the some of the complications uncontrolled high blood pressure can cause um death of course it can kill you if you get a if you get a stroke or busted artery like in your brain um that's the end of you um damage your arteries because the sustained pressure um on your arteries is bad for your arteries and it can cause problems it damages your kidneys which it, which i don't have on there but the sustained pressure um across your kidney walls also damages your kidney and causes um, kidney failure, in which case you're, you're on dialysis machines for the rest of your life, uh, or you need a kidney um, transplant or a kidney replacement. Um, you can have damage to your brain, sustained sustained um, pressure, blood pressure to your brain causes a rupture deep in the brain as the, as the blood vessels and the capillaries get smaller and smaller and smaller, um, causes um, um, damage to your brain you can get what's called a tia uh, which is a transient ischemic attack i call a mini stroke uh, it's a temporary disruption of blood supply to your brain um, and that that generally leads to later on to a full-blown stroke so a stroke occurs when a part of your brain is deprived of oxygen and nutrients causing your brain cells to die and when your brain cells die they're dead they don't regenerate um, your blood vessels damaged by high blood pressure can narrow, rupture, or leak. Um, high blood pressure can also cause blood clots to form in the arteries, leading to your brain blocking your blood flow and potentially causing a stroke. Um, this is a very serious condition. A stroke changes your life. If you survive it, your life is probably changed. You get paralysis from it. Um, you lose. You can lose vision. You can lose one. You know. A movement in one side of your body, all kinds of different outcomes from strokes, um, and it all and it all comes from sustained hypertension. Uh, dementia, you can get narrowed or blocked arteries, can limit blood flow to the brain, leading to a certain type of dementia. A uh, stroke that interrupts blood flow to the brain can also call fat can also cause vascular dementia. I'll have my doctor talk about that because I have no idea what that is. Um, you can have damage, as I mentioned before, you damage your kidneys because you have pressure on your kidneys, uh, too high pressure all the time, pressure against your kidneys, it will damage your kidneys over time. And when you lose your kidney function, um, then you lose the ability to, to um, cleanse your blood. And so you have to go on um, dialysis, which is hook you up to a machine and you gotta um, do your treatment that way. It causes damage to your eyes because blood flows in and out of your eyes. And so it damages the cornea um, and other parts of the eye. Um, maybe I should have an ophthalmologist on here to discuss what it does to your eyes, but damages your eyes also. Um, in other words, damages damage to your retina, it, it retin, retinopathy, damage to the light sensitive tissue at the back of your eye, the retina, can lead to bleeding in the eye, blurred vision, and complete loss of vision. 
Uh, you're at even greater risk if you have diabetes in addition to high blood pressure. And also, um, men and women, it also causes sexual dysfunction, especially it, um, um, pronounced in the case of men where blood flow is what causes erections and things like that. So you have um, sexual dysfunction. So nothing good comes of sustained hypertension. It is a condition um, which is serious and must be treated um, immediately, uh, if not sooner. <laughs> so uh, there is a, that's the outcome of sustained hypertension. Um, so any questions, just go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, so things to do, there are some of the things I have done. My blood pressure at the time of my stroke was 220 over 120. Um, so which is ridiculously high and that leads to a stroke. So if you get to numbers like that, um, immediately call your, um, immediately get to emergency, call 911. What you need to do if your pressure is, again, if the high, systolic is over 160 and the diastolic is over what the numbers were, I forgot that numbers are it's 160, greater than 160, greater than 100, um, please get to a doctor right away. Please get to emergency rather right away so things to do some of the things i have done um reduce sodium sodium is one of the main culprits of high blood pressure and consuming too much of it regularly um, can increase the individual's risk for heart attack and stroke oh before i mention sodium uh one of the main things you can do you should do is to um, um consult your your physician number one um and i missed the, the most important thing is um, consult your physician. Uh, your, your physician will probably or can probably um, put you on medication, which is going to immediately lower um, your, uh, your your pressure or immediately bring it under control. So you need to see your physician. That should be the top one. I, I, I somehow left off that chart, but that is the most important thing. Go to see your physician. If it's in the if it's in the range here where you can see a physician, so in the in this pre-hypertension stage, go see a physician. Even if it's in the hypertension stage one, if it's in stage two, um, you need to go immediately to the emergency room. Um, and I cannot stress that enough. Um, so things you can do for yourself while you are taking your medication. Let me stress that again. Um, if you have gone to see your physician and he or she recommends medication, stay on your medication. Things you can do, however, are to reduce your sodium. Since sodium is one of the main culprits of high blood pressure, um, consuming too much of it regularly can increase in your risk for heart attack and stroke. Um, sodium is found in many, many foods. Um, some of them even marketed as healthy foods. Now, I just had the, I, you know, when I run in the evening sometimes, I may get a little thirsty, and so I pick up a bottle, a bottle of, um, of, of, you know, one of the aids, quote unquote aids, and um, a lot. Of, there is a huge amount of sodium in a lot of these um, drinks. So they're marketed as healthy drinks. Uh, you have to be mindful of the label. Then one of the things you have to start doing if you have hypertension, you have to read the labels on everything. Everything that you put in your body, you have to read the labels. And you have to be aware of what's showing there, which is the sodium content. You have to manage sodium. If you have hypertension, you have to manage your sodium levels. Sodium is the number one driver from all the reading I've done. It, it, genetics, I'm sorry, is first. Sodium is the next um, high driver of, um, of um, hypertension. So sodium is found in many foods, some of which are even marketed as healthy foods. It is recommended by... Um, the USRDA that you keep sodium levels to uh, under 2300. Um, in my case, I brought it to under 800 milligrams of sodium per day. Um, but some experts, you know, mention uh, here, um, they re recommend that you limit sodium to less than 1500 milligrams per day, um, especially you know, people who are sensitive to the harmful effects of sodium. Um, wink, wink, that means African Americans. That we are very, very, very sensitive um, to the harmful effects of sodium. So if you're African American, your goal is to limit your sodium intake to under 1500 milligrams per day. Um, uh, to reduce your sodium intake, it is best to consume whole foods that are not processed with added sodium. So some things such as eating um, too much Chinese food at the Chinese takeout, 
adding soy sauce. Take a look at the packet of soy sauce and look at the amount of sodium. On the next um, um, broadcast on this topic, I'll go into the different foods and the level of sodium in each of those foods. Um, but look at what you're eating um, every day. It's best to eat at home. And it's not so much the little table salt that you add because that's not what's causing it. What's causing it is the the high level of sodium in processed food, even the places, places I'll talk about this more um, on the next broadcast, but there are some foods that you'd be surprised and we're just gonna take a look at the label and we're gonna see what the sodium content is. Um, but most people, and I know in my case, um, when I, um, before I started watching this, I was up to close to maybe three, 4,000 um, milligrams per day, sometimes over 5,000 milligrams per day of sodium. And uh, if you sustain that level of sodium in your diet over time, especially if you're African-American, it is going to lead to hypertension without question. Um, so uh, fresh fruits, vegetables, and lean meats are particularly good for individuals who wish to reduce their consumption of sodium. So again, fresh fruits, vegetables, lean meats, and again, it's best to prepare your foods at home where you and or your wife, or if you're single or if you're, you know, whatever the case might be, um, when you can manage the amount of sodium that's in the uh, food, um, that is probably, that is not probably, that is the best outcome. So what I've done is I've reduced sodium. I don't eat out as much. Um, I'm going to talk next time we talk, we'll talk about the salty six, I believe, or a salty seven, um, a food that you should absolutely avoid if you have any kind of um, um, danger of, or, or, or predisposed in any way to hypertension. There are some foods that you absolutely have to um, avoid. Uh, so things to do again, eat right, consult your physician. Um, I cannot stress enough. Um, one of the other um, is that you have to monitor your blood pressure daily. If you have any kind of hypertension um, in your life or in is, is, is that your current case, you have to monitor your blood pressure daily. You cannot wait for your yearly checkup to monitor your, <laughs> to check your pressure at the doctor's office. Um, you have to buy a machine and I'll also talk about it at the next time you buy a machine and you check your pressure every day. Sometimes you check your pressure. I check mine maybe two, three times a day. I'm in the morning, the afternoon and before I go to bed um, when I'm being really good. <laughs> I don't always fast, stick fastidiously to that, but that is the plan, especially when you're just starting out because you need to understand um, what you react to. Um, you need to Again, um, one of my best friends said, and we say this also at work, whatever you want to manage, you have to measure. If you want to manage something, you have to measure it. You can't um, manage blood pressure without measuring um, what your body is responding or not responding to. Um, so if you want to manage your blood pressure, you have to measure your blood pressure. So go ahead and, and buy a machine. They're at Costco, they're on Amazon. Um, I can recommend one. Um, the next time, I, the, the one I use is the A and D, so I can recommend that one now. Um, but that's not the only one. There are many, many other ones that you can um, use. Um, but again, you have to manage your blood pressure by measuring. You have to measure. If you don't know your numbers, <laughs> you don't know what's going on. Because again, it's called the silent killer for a reason, because it gives you very little warning about what it's doing to your body. So you have to monitor your pressure daily. Some things, um, uh, again, um, that I've used um, is, is managing diet. Again, the, the most important thing there is sodium. Um, sodium must be reduced as even a small uh, reduction can improve your blood pressure. The USRA, um, the USRDA recommended um, number for sodium is 2,330 milligrams per day. Um, I try to stay, if I can, under 800. Um, uh, it's, uh, regular table salt is sodium chloride. You can sometimes use a salt substitute like potassium chloride instead, which is sold right next to the regular salt on the stand in most places. So um, you can also look for a salt substitute. The one I use called New Salt, NU Salt, tastes just like salt, but it doesn't have sodium. Um, it uses potassium chloride, which if you remember from chemistry, is also a salt. Um, so potassium can lessen the effects of sodium. 
So focus on consuming more bananas, dark leafy green vegetables, yogurts, uh, fish, mushrooms, and avocado. Again, imperative that you avoid processed and fast foods. This is going to kill you. Some of you is going to kill you if you if you stop eating fast food because you love it so much. But you you got absolutely have to take care of your body, and so you have to avoid the processed foods and the fast foods. And the reason why the processed foods are bad is because it's it's used pres to preserve. Like for instance, if you get processed soups um, in, inside the can, just open, look at the label and look at the amount of sodium that's in a can of soup. You'll be surprised. And a lot of the foods are processed and they're preserved with what we, they call salt, but it's also, it's the sodium in the salt that's causing the problem. And when it comes to adding salt, um, develop new habits. Instead of putting salt on the food, instead of reaching for the salt shaker, just put some, some herbs on the food. Not the kind of herbs some of you are thinking. Let's put some herbs on the food, um, some spices, and maybe just add some citrus juice, a little bit of lemon, squeeze a little bit of lemon, spritz a little lemon on it, and see if that helps um, instead. Again, you have to manage sodium. Sodium is definitely a killer when it comes to hypertension. You want to bring your sodium levels way, 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 way down. All right, so things to try, and we're running out of time. We're probably out of time, about six minutes and 30 seconds over. Um, but things to try are the DASH diet. So DASH stands for the Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. The DASH diet is a healthy eating plan designed to help treat or prevent high blood pressure. Um, it includes foods that are rich in potassium, calcium, and magnesium. Um, and these nutrients help control blood pressure. It, it limits food that are high in sodium. It limits food that are high in sodium, saturated fat, and sugars. I know for me, sugar, for some reason, I'm gonna try to understand this, but sugar, impacts my blood pressure also negatively so a lot of high sugar foods a lot of stuff in high fructose corn syrup it's also type type of sugar um anything which is high just sugar sugar on the on the label is also going to be a contributor uh, studies have shown that the dash diet can lower blood pressure in as little as two weeks so look at that about two weeks if you can somehow and it's not uh, i'll i'll bring up some of the um uh, I'll give you some of the, the um, factors in the diet, DASH diet on the next chart, I believe. The diet can also lower low density or, or LDL um, cholesterol levels in the blood. And high pressure and high LDL cholesterol levels are two major risk factors for heart disease and stroke. So having high blood pressure, along with your bad management of your LDL cholesterol, now LDL cholesterol is bad, HDL cholesterol good. Um, so if you have high LDL, um, and the chances are probably you have low HDL and you have hypertension, uh, you're getting ready to have a stroke. All right, so I hope that I didn't, I didn't go more into the, into the DASH diet. Sorry, I'll get to that next time. All right, so one of the things I've done also is to get active. Um, I run now or I walk, I run or walk almost, you know, sometimes an hour a day, sometimes 40 minutes a day but you have to get active. I'm not recommending that for everyone. Everyone cannot do that. So, but even 30 minutes a day of activity can make a significant difference. It's all about creating new sustainable habits. So these are lifestyle changes. Um, there, let me just quickly say, there is no quick fix to hypertension. Um, well, there is a help if you take your medication, it will help to bring your numbers way down, um, but there is no real quick fix to it. You can't just go um, take some supplement that someone's recommending to you on YouTube um, and get rid of your hypertension. That's not gonna happen. It is a lifestyle change. So part of your lifestyle is that you're going to have to reduce sodium levels in your life, in your diet. You're gonna have to bring the sodium levels way down. I, I, I recommend under 800 milligrams um, per day. Trust me, you'll get used to it. Um, then the next thing, you have to get active. You cannot leave live a sedentary lifestyle um, with hypertension, you have to get active. Um, so you have to find something to do. Um, the, 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 um, what um, healthprep.com says, exercise can stop full-blown hypertension, um, full-blown high blood pressure from develop in those dealing with pre-hypertension. So if you have pre-hypertension, you start exercising, it can stop it in its track and it won't progress into hypertension. 
Um, some of the best exercises to target high blood pressure include dancing. If you like to dance, there you go. Um, cycling, jogging, swimming. Um, so cycling, jogging, swimming are things that a lot of us can do. Mostly, most of us can jog or walk. You can even walk. Uh, and also what also helps me is strength training also helps with um with the high blood pressure um because you're you're going to develop muscle muscle requires um muscle gets helps you get rid of fat because muscle requires your metabolism to increase i'm not a doctor but anyway so it helps to um to 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 um to your it helps your metabolism helps the blood flow all that's good for you strength training is, is great um i know when i work out lift weights my blood pressure goes down some point i'm going to figure that out too um if you don't know where to start speak with the doctor again speak with your doctor um the excess the doctor usually will help you develop an exercise plan that meets your needs and your personal goals don't just start jumping into exercise and don't go on youtube and start looking at somebody's exercise plan talk to your doctor find out what you need to do uh, what's going to be right for you given your um your current health um, situation your current health um, um, diagnosis. So again, get active. You have to move. If you even have to walk, um, you know, I said to my mom, you have to walk maybe 20 minutes a day. Some seniors I know may have problems with that. Maybe 10, 15 minutes a day, walk inside your house, walk around your house, walk up and down the stairs, do something like that. But you have to move. It's best if you can get outside, breathe some, breathe some fresh air, walk around outside, and then come back inside if you can. Um, next um, in, important thing to do is that you have to lose weight. You cannot um, deal. Hypertension is also fueled by weight, sodium, weight, bad diet. Um, those things fuel um, hypertension. You have to lose weight. But both, if the good news is if you have a healthy diet and you exercise, you're probably going to result in, in weight loss. Um, so the increased rates of obesity are con in, in America are a contributing factor um, to hypertension, heart disease, and diabetes. So you have to um, go on a plan um, to lose weight. And in, in, um, uh, healthprep.com says losing just 10 pounds can make a significant difference. I've noticed that in my life, I've gone from 100 and almost 38 pounds down to, I mean, 238, what am I saying? I wish I was 138, 238 down to under 200. And that's made a huge difference in the numbers in terms of my um, my overall hypertension uh, or in terms of my overall systolic and diastolic numbers. So um, again, you have to kind of think about going on some kind of um, um, exercise routine or diet routine or, or workout routine that's going to help you lose and manage your weight. Um, some of us are, are too um, big. We have to lose some of the weight. If you have hypertension and high weight, you got to If you bring down the weight, I promise you, it'll also bring down um, your systolic and your diastolic numbers. So lose weight is another thing that I've done. Another thing I've done is manage stress. Stress level um, causes all kinds of conditions. I'll have the doctor talk to you about that. But stress, uh, managing stress also helps to bring your, your um, hypertension numbers down. Um, you know, the chart there says there's no doubt this world is hectic and stressful, but managing your everyday stress is beneficial. Um, you have to first um, understand that chronic stress is hard on your body. It results in high blood pressure. So you got to manage stress at work. After my, my stroke incident, I had to really um, come back into uh, work and, and discuss it with um, people at work and we were able to reduce my workload and stress load and that has really helped. So you first got to be aware about aware of stress. Many of us are very, very stressed out and we don't even understand it. We don't even know it. Most of what happens when you're stressed out is you just want to sleep more. Um, but understanding how certain things can trigger your stress uh, is a necessity. It is important to avoid or change those triggers um, that happen um, to you to make you stressed out. Don't worry about things that you have no control over. You have to understand that that causes stress. A lot of us worry about things that we can't control. We can't control. Um, some of us are worried about um, you know, things, uh, global nature, you can't control the word about what's going on with the pandemic. You can't control that. All you can control 
is what you do. You can't control what's going on across the whole world and you can't stay up at nights worrying about all those things. So try not to worry about things that you have no control over. Um, that generates stress. Then some of our lifestyles also are stress inducing and stress, stress causing. So we have to be very careful about how we're managing stress in those cases. So you have to, what it says here, um, find an activity that relaxes you. If you like to read, read. If you want to play sports, play sports. If you want to paint, paint. If you play video games, play a video game. Um, take a, a minimum of 20 minutes each day to just sit and relax and enjoy the moment. Um, I, you know, I like to um, run when I run. I, I don't even listen to music when I run anymore because I, I just want to hear what's going on around me because there's, we're so inundated with so much all the time. Um, it does produce a level of stress that even we sometimes are not even aware of what it's doing to our bodies. Just find a quiet time. Find a quiet time, sit down, enjoy just quietness. Um, it's good also to pick up your word of God here and just read your word of God and just meditate upon the word of God. Just find a quiet time and just meditate 20 minutes a day. It's not hard. Um, also, deep breathing and mindfulness have been shown to be highly effective um, means of reducing stress. All right, so things to do, some other things, because I'm all out of time. I'm, I'm about 15 minutes over my time. All right, so take your blood pressure medicine as directed. If you have hypertension and you've already been diagnosed, do not get off your medication until your doctor unless or until you can do all these things here it will bring your numbers down significantly but it may not get you to the point where you don't have to take medication you may get to the point where you don't have to take medication um, but again that's something that you have to do with the consultation of your doctor so take your blood pressure medicine as directed um, some of the other things you can do limit your consumption of alcohol oh i know that makes some of you very upset but uh, you got to drop the alcohol because that's also going to drive your pressure up. And I'll have the doctor talk to that. Um, drink more water. Um, I don't recommend you go out and drink a gallon or two of water, but there are some. I My guideline drinking water is if I feel thirsty, I drink water. Um, you can eat small amounts of dark chocolate. Um, and number five is if you're smoking, um, you need to stop smoking. Um, so you need to quit smoking. Um, there is nothing good that can come of smoking. Every health condition, um, every bad health condition is exacerbated by smoking. So quit smoking. All right. That's all I have time for um, right now. Um, we're going to, if you have questions, drop it in the chat and um, we'll see if I can answer them while um, the broadcast is going. All right. So glad you're able to join in. So next time we're going to um, talk a little bit more about some of the foods that you have to kind of um, stay away from and some of the foods that you can eat. So let's talk about some of the things you can. Let's talk about some do's and some don'ts. And then maybe two or three broadcasts from now, I'm gonna have uh, my physician come in and talk and then also have a, a, um, a nurse practitioner come in and also talk about things that we can do with hypertension. All right. That's all the time I have for today. Thanks for, um, for watching. And again, take care of yourself. Thanks for taking this health time out. Have a great day.